New Archaeology and the Loss of Innocence New archaeology developed during the 1960s and 70s at the same time as new technology was being applied within archaeology. Archaeologists and anthropologists had become concerned that traditional approaches to archaeological interpretations were often only focusing on the function of artefacts and that there was not enough explanations for the patterns which laid within them. For example, a sword might be used as a weapon, but the gold handle may denote the owner's upper-class social status, and the symbol engraved on the blade might invoke religious protection. Theoretical approaches and the use of new technologies was what new archaeologists aimed to use in order to make archaeology more scientific. With new scientific methods being adopted in archaeology, such as isotopic analysis and C14 dating, traditional chronologies and archaeological understandings became reformed, particularly with the dating of prehistoric artefacts. New archaeologists began to take on a positive view of the ancient past, whereby the aim was to explain observed phenomena with reference to a set of general relationships rather than a series of laws, which might be expected in the natural sciences. New archaeology placed an emphasis on empirical data as the primary means of testing the explanations offered because such data are regarded as objectively recovered through archaeological fieldwork. Systems theory became the dominant theoretical model used in new archaeology, where ancient societies were seen as a series of subsystems interacting with each other and the environment in which the system is set. New archaeologists believed it was wrong to treat artefacts as being equal and having comparable traits. Instead, archaeologists should try to determine the roles they have played within living culture. Many ideas were laid out in America by the leading thinker of new archaeology, Lewis Binford. Binford suggested that cultures should be viewed as adaptive systems composed of three interrelated subsystems, technology, social organisation and ideology. Binford argued that artefacts do not interact within a single subsystem of culture, but reflect all three subsystems. Technomic aspects of artefacts reflect how they were used to cope with the environment. Sociotech items have their primary context in the social system, and ideotech objects relate to the ideological realm. Individual artefacts were also considered by Binford to frequently reflect all three aspects. In 1968, Binford and his wife Sally published a book titled New Perspectives in Archaeology, where he stressed the need for the use of computers to record archaeological data and for the understanding of subsistence and economic bases of prehistoric societies. Binford argued that by using knowledge derived from the physical and biological sciences to interpret aspects of the archaeological record relating to technomic behaviour, especially subsistence patterns and technological practices, that new archaeology had made great strides in understanding prehistoric societies. In Britain, David Clark published his book Analytical Archaeology in 1968 which advocated new archaeology and placed emphasis on the application of systems theory to archaeological modelling. The primary aims in archaeology now included the study of archaeologically recognisable changes in cultural systems, often interpreted from changing spatial patterns in the data, and attention was paid to those subsystems considered most detectable from archaeological evidence. Clark recognised that archaeologists had failed to assemble a real body of method and theory that would allow the discipline to advance. In America, new archaeology tended to reject history as it was considered pejoratively associated with Indosyncratic details and regional chronology, contributing only to processional explanations. In Britain, however, history remained an integral part of archaeology, although dates and chronologies were now being revised and the discipline became known as processional archaeology. Clark's work also drew from the work of numerical taxonomists, cultural geographers and system theorists in order to help understand prehistoric cultural systems. With archaeology turning to scientific methods of understanding and moving away from the reliance and reproving of history, archaeology was considered as losing its innocence. Although new archaeology had made advances in theoretical thought within the archaeological interpretation, 
many of the positivist systems produced seemed to generate numbers rather than archaeological understanding and were impossible to translate. Using science theory and explanations based on logical positivism, new archaeologists believed that narratives of the past were directly accessible through objects and could be read by the trained professional. Scholars were criticised for relying too heavily on scientific data and producing hypotheses which lay outside of that data. New archaeology, although making breakthroughs in archaeological theory, by the 1980s was being criticised itself by what became known as the post-processional archaeology. Post-processional archaeology will be discussed in the next video by Simple Archaeology. Thank you for watching.